Welcome to Teachable Moments Spiders Part 2. In this episode, we will learn about a fun nighttime hunting technique, how to tell the difference between a male and female spider, mating rituals, spider eggs and spiderlings, and spider growth. The spider in this photo is a male marbled orb weaver. How do I know it's a male? You'll find out soon. One of the things I love to do when we come down here is to uh, look for spider eyes, go out on a spider hunt at night. Usually it's um, wolf spiders that we find. So what you do is you wear a headlamp like I've got on now or, or have a bright flashlight over your head and then you shine it down and if you see little lights flashing back at you or shining back at you, that is the eye reflection of these spiders. So these hunting spiders have great big eyes and uh, the light will reflect off the back of their eyes. So let's turn this around and see if we can find anything. Okay, I see one right there. Let's try some more here. Ah, oh, there's a good one right there. Oh, it's amazing. They start to look like little stars. Ah, here we go. And here is our wolf spider. This is Spiders, the Next Generation. If you've ever wondered how to tell the difference between a male and a female spider, just look for what I call boxing gloves up near the mouth. These are called palps or pedipalps. They are enlarged in the males and are used for mating. Sorry guys, but male spiders are often much smaller than the females. This spider is a male, and the way I can tell is it looks like he's got boxing gloves. These are called pedipalps, and the males use these for mating. They uh, transfer the sperm to the female with these two little organs. This is a female, and you can see up by her head her smaller pedipalps so she doesn't have those larger ones. Here are some other male spiders. Be sure and look very closely to see if you can see the pedipalps on these. The male spider often stays farther back away from the female so that he doesn't become a male. Check out the legs on this cellar spider. This is a male and I caught him at the school where I used to teach. Grass spiders are sheep web builders. You can see this male is pretty far away from the female. He doesn't want to become her meal. You can see his very tiny petty palps. Spider courting can be a risky proposition. In order to become a mate instead of a meal, the male spider taps the female's web to announce his intentions so she doesn't mistake him for prey. Some male spiders will present their lady with a gift of a juicy insect so that he doesn't become her meal. In this video, you can see how the male is getting ready to mate with the female. The male is in a precarious position during mating. His head is directly below the female's mouth. This photo shows how the male taps the female with his pedipalps to prepare her for mating. Prior to mating, the male deposited a drop of sperm onto the web, which he took up into the pedipalps. 
After convincing the female that he is not prey, he begins to rapidly tap on the underside of her abdomen. He then inserts a palp into her epigynum or gonopore. I laughed when I saw the jealous female come along to break up the party. So watch till the end. Watch how this party's about to get crashed. There's a jealous female coming in. Wow. She chases off the first female who has a larger abdomen so it's easy to tell who she is. And it looks like she is not really so interested in mating as she is in possibly having a meal. The girlfriend is staying off in the background there. Here she comes. But the party crashers back. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes the male spider is much smaller than the female spider. And in the case of the golden silk spiders, the males are much, much smaller than the females. But they're big enough to get the job done. Some female spiders may have more than one suitor vying for her attention. Do you see three males in the photo of this golden silk spider? About a week after mating has occurred, the female lays her eggs in a silken sack. There may be several hundred eggs in a sack. Eggs laid later in the year may overwinter protected in the sacks. Female spiders can store sperm so that they're able to lay eggs for an extended period. Here are a few other examples of spider egg cases. This is an egg case that has just hatched. You can see all the tiny babies, the little spiderlings. Wolf spiders protect their egg sac by carrying it under their abdomen. Not many critters would mess with this mama spider. She has her legs up in a defensive position. When the spiderlings hatch, they climb out on the mother wolf spider's back as she carries them around for a few days. This photo would be an arachnophobe's worst nightmare. Spiderlings don't make good brothers or sisters. They will eat each other. So to avoid their cannibalistic siblings, they climb out to a high point on a branch and shoot out a strand of silk. A gust of wind can carry them long distances because they are so light. This is called ballooning. One time on a canoe trip, I saw spiders on a buoy in the middle of the river and wondered how in the world they got there. Ballooning is the answer. Spiderlings hatch fully developed, ready to take on the world. They do not go through different stages of metamorphosis the way insects do. Even when they are small, they can still spin webs. Spiders lay so many eggs because lots of these babies will not survive to adulthood. These are black widow spiderlings. Only the little girls will grow up to have a venomous bite like their mother. Male black widows are harmless. These little spiders will change color after a few successful molts as they grow. Like insects, spiders have an exoskeleton that does not stretch as they grow, so they have to molt or shed their skin in order to get bigger. It is common to see discarded skins near them in their webs. This is the molted exoskeleton of a wolf spider the kids found at science camp a few years ago. To shed, the carapace, or the upper part of the cephalothorax, splits, followed by the skin of the abdomen. The spider can then crawl out of the discarded skin. If a spider has lost a leg previously, during molting, it may replace it with a new, smaller leg. Thank you for watching Teachable Moments. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about our eight-legged friends. For more information about 
spiders, and nature, visit my website, easttennesseewildflowers.com.